Hello, my name is Oliver, and I'm here to show you the uh, Green Seattle Partnership map on uh, ArcGIS Online. Um, I have navigated to the map by going to the greenseattle.org website and clicking on the link provided there. Uh, you can see the map here in my browser window. Um, it consists of this interactive display area uh, and a navigation pane on the left and then a toolbar across the top. So if I'm interested in changing the view extent of kind of the uh, interactive display area, uh, I can use either the plus or the minus icons to zoom in or out. Um, if you have a scroll uh, wheel on your mouse, you can also use that to zoom in or zoom out. Um, and then to move around in the map, you click and then drag to a new location. Um, I'm going to zoom in over here on Discovery Park. Uh, if you look in the navigation pane, you can see that right now we're showing two different layers on top of our base map. Uh, the first layer on top is the Green Seattle Partnership Zone boundaries. Um, you can see these in red. These are uh, the boundaries of the Green Seattle Partnership Zone, which is the primary management unit. We also have a layer that shows the Green Seattle Partnership sites within the zone uh, and different areas within the zone, what phase they're in. So um, if I click on a particular area, a pop-up window comes up and it shows me information about the different data layers that I've clicked on, the different particular features objects within the layer. So um, it'll show you information about one item at a time. So this is one out of two. The first thing to come up is the zone information. Uh, and you can look down here. It has a number of different attributes that relate to that zone in particular. Um, uh, as you can see, the area that we're talking about, the information is for, is highlighted in this kind of blue color behind the pop-up window. Uh, if we're interested in seeing what else was selected, we can click on this arrow, which shows us the next feature. Um, there it is. It's, the site by, it's from the site by phase layer right there. This is an area that's highlighted now that is, uh, was in phase one the last time uh, we had a contractor go out to do field verification. Because um, that's where the data is for the phase comes from. Uh, we hire a contractor to go out and they do an assessment of uh, what phase of restoration each area is in. Um, you can see from this map and this view that the last time we visited this area was September 24th, 2013. So there's a chance that by now this area has actually entered into phase two or phase three, depending on whether or not it's been uh, planted or is kind of an establishment. Um, one of the things that we can do to manipulate our display is go into this contents area. Um, if we go to the navigation pane and click on this icon, it shows us all of the different data layers that we can uh, choose from. It also gives us options for the layers that are shown. So uh, let's say I'm interested in seeing a little bit more of the base layer. I can click on this phase, site by phase layer and adjust the transparency. Um, so by moving the bar, it makes it more or less transparent. Uh, let's leave it at about, about here so we can still see what's going on. Um, zoom out a little bit so that you can see the effects of adding the other layers. Each of these layers uh, is a layer from the city servers that is not necessarily maintained by Green Seattle Partnership, um, but our, it contains data that we think uh, you'll find interesting and, and useful. So um, the first one is a steep slope layer. Um, sometimes it takes a moment to load, but these are areas that have slopes that are greater than 40%. So they're areas that uh, volunteers should generally not be working. Um, there's a designated wetland layer, sewage and drainage line layer, which could be useful before you dig. Um, we also have a park boundary layer. So you can see that those are the boundaries of the, the uh, parks 
department management. Um, there's a layer that has known slide points. Um, so you can see those little points in red pop up along here, along here, and over there. Um, there's also a known slide areas layer. Um, so there should be a good amount of overlap between the known slide points and the known slide areas. Um, and then we also have a stream layer, which you can see in, in blue, although it doesn't show up as quite as well. Um, so that allows you to kind of add different data layers to the existing map. Another thing that you can do is change the base map entirely. So uh, if you go up to the toolbar right here, you can click on base map and you can select uh, a different base map. Right now, uh, the base map for the map, it starts off as this imagery base map, which I believe is from an aerial photo. Um, sometimes it's useful to use the street layer because that shows the names of the streets. It also does a pretty good job indicating where trails are within the park. Um, there's also a uh, topographic map, which shows contour lines, although they're pretty light. Um, and then the National Geographic one, which also does a pretty good job showing trails, and it's got some shaded relief, uh, and it's generally kind of an aesthetically pleasing map. Um, one tool that we think will be really useful to forest stewards and contractors is a measurement tool um, that ArcGIS Online has. So you can see up in the top, if say you did a whole bunch of invasive removal over here and you wanted to measure it to enter the data into Cedar, you could click on measure. Um, you want to pick your units from this little drop down menu here, square feet usually. And then you can draw out a little polygon. Uh, every time you click, it creates a vertex. And then when you double click, it provides the measurement. Zoom in a little more. Um, might be easier. Some of the base maps don't uh, have resolution at certain extent. So that's what's happened now. I've zoomed in too much for that base map. But for the imagery base map, uh, there's, there's still good resolution there. Um, so that's how you measure. Uh, and then I think in another video, what we'll do is we'll show you how to make annotations. But uh, for now, that's kind of how you use the basic functions of ArcGIS Online and the GSP data layers. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to talk to uh, either one of your plant ecologists or Andrea or uh, uh, any of the GSP staff. Thank you very much.